Then fourthly, praise makes our faith public. It's our confession, if you like, or part of it. It's an open announcement to the world of what we believe. And if you compare that to the spirit of our age, this is what the spirit of our age says. Everybody can believe what they want as long as it doesn't upset the belief that everybody can believe what they want. And if it does upset that belief, you can't believe it at all. Well, our faith is different. We have truth to declare and hope to sing about. We're going to do all that we can to encourage everybody to believe. But we're going to do nothing to force anybody to do so. I have to say the church has failed in this spectacularly at times in its history, but gladly it's now more or less back on the right tracks. In a way this is our key attraction and in a way it's our key witness because weakness because we don't have power to force people to believe, but we only praise in weakness because the one that we praise has the strength and that we don't. We have made a big mistake. We've often made worship something that we come to church to do and we equate it with singing. But actually worship starts <clears throat> in the depths of our hearts. It continues into music, but worship starts where the technical stops. Worship is that part in a song or hymn when we let go of singing the right words and the right notes and our imagination starts to blossom and our faith begins to stir. So it's the point when we're singing on which the King of Glory died at Easter, when to us that suddenly becomes, for me the King of Glory died. And then when a whole group of people get together, suddenly we're all prompted by the Spirit and we're singing, for us the King of Glory died. And that's the difference between just singing and worship. For those people who are watching from the Lend Valley Benefits and hopefully joining in as well, uh, we have been using this book is called Saying Yes to Life by Ruth Valerio as part of our Lent course. And I want to give an example of what all this stuff about worship is about from a song, the words of which are quoted in the uh, fifth chapter, I think it is, of this book, uh, which is a chapter all about uh, water and air and, and uh, creatures of water and the birds. And these are words from this Hillsong's uh, song, Ocean. So just close your eyes and worship to these words. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes apart above the waves. Where oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours and yours and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't start now. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Wherever you would call me, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Saviour. I'd like to finish this reflection before we pray together by asking you to again pause this video and I want you to think about a single word just as the people called out Hosanna as Jesus entered into Jerusalem. What single word would you use 
to shout out your praise to Jesus. So think and reflect on that in a minute, for a minute. And then what I would like you to do is to do something unbelievably un-English. I want you to shout that word. And preferably, open your windows and shout it. Let people hear it. Amen. So let's end our time together today by praying together. And whether you have a cross, which looks like the palm cross or looks like the paper cross, I suggest that you hold it up as we pray together. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, as we stand at the foot of the cross where you died, help us to see and know your love for us, so that in humility, love and joy, we may place at his feet all that we have and all that we are. May this be our life's greatest praise. Amen. Loving Father who weeps for the state of our earth, for the way we have exploited it in our greed and selfishness, and for the earth's rejection of the people of that exploitation and the form of COVID-19, have mercy upon us. Save us, we pray. Save us from our sins and save us from this virus. Restore us back to health, but not as people unchanged, but as a people who are more dedicated to love their neighbour, to care for creation, and to give you our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The almighty Lord, who is a strong tower of all who put their trust in him, be now and evermore your defence and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and forevermore. Amen. Some quick notices for those in Len Valley. Firstly, we're coming up to Easter, of course, and for Easter there will be two reflections. There will be one on Good Friday, which will include some poetry, and one on Sunday, which will include Holy Communion. So if you're able at home, please do um, have a small glass of wine and some bread that you can share at home as I take communion here in my home. Secondly, ordinations this year are very sadly being postponed because of the coronavirus. So Charlotte, our curate, who is coming to us, uh, her ordination will now not be when it was, but it will now be in September. And there'll be more about that later on. And then lastly, put in your diary the 30th of March. Something we can all do at the moment is to be praying for our nation, for this world and for the people around us. And the diocese has announced that the 30th of May will be a day of prayer. We'll, there'll be more about that later on but please do put that in your diary. And now I'd like to invite you at home to find a song or a hymn or a piece of music that you can listen to and join in. And as you do that, don't just sing the words, but turn the music, turn the words into real praise to your God who died for you. Amen.